Hi there, it's me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter, doing the fifth week of back to work. Well, he just wants to chew on something. Up there, buddy. So, let's just talk about, I've now done one full month from December 31st to January 31st, back to work. Well, including today, February 1st. Uh, granted, I'm, I started out working three hours a day for two weeks and then four hours a day for two weeks, and then five hours a day for a week. I've done my sums correctly. I've only completed 80, actually 87 hours of work time. You okay there? In five weeks. So I learned a few things. So let's just talk about my return to work journey so far. This week, I went to five hours. Um, I really, really, really felt that extra hour um i would i napped um thursday being yesterday and wednesday the day before um i'd get home and i'd nap i hadn't napped as much during the second week of doing four hours a day the first week i went back to work oh i napped every day after work i would come home i'd hit the lazy boy and or find bed and just just i'd be done this week um I called in sick on Monday. Um, I strained my brain too much on, on the Sunday. Um, I was with a friend. <clears throat> I play a, a game or sport called Airsoft. I don't really consider it a sport. We'll discuss that another day. Um, and my Airsoft gun needed maintenance. And I've never taken apart the mechanical worky bits that make the toys go. Right? So my brain got a bit strained by that. Uh, I was learning a new skill that's very technically involved. Um, there's gears that are involved. There's electrics that are involved. There's pneumatics that are involved. There's a spring that involved. That is attached, my friend. And um, so my brain got a bit strained. I got home. Uh, I was exhausted mentally and, and, and ergo exhausted physically. And then um, uh, I had to uh, call in on Monday because I was just not in a good space to work my brain was just done um <clears throat> so this week's been a bit tiring at times but this entire week and all of the week before i haven't had any support um other than what a normal worker or agent would have at my place of employment so <clears throat> what i mean by that is for the first couple days when i was on my own i wasn't truly on my own i had a mentor agent there working with me and and he if you are watching this you are a truly skilled and brilliant individual, right? Um, so, I get every job. They keep statistics on how well you do or do not do your job. Um, we use a, an online portal where you can see your statistics. They're one or two days at a date sometimes because it takes a while for everything to generate. Well, if everything works out right, I'm actually going to finish in the first quartile, meaning the top 25% of all agents, um, for my site, um, if not globally for my skill set. <clears throat> and I actually might even qualify for bonus. That's wasn't expecting that. Um, so performance-wise, I'm I'm getting back into my own stride. I'm finding my own cadence. I'm getting finding my own gait. Um, so that is easier. I was really concerned, to be quite honest, on about how well I would perform um, if I'd still be able to perform the same way because I've been in the top 10% of all agents globally in my skill set for two years. Right. So I'm a pretty hard charger and a pretty high flyer. And I had a lot of expectations I set on myself, which was causing me anxiety, right? So I had some, some problem there. Uh, so I've learned a few things. One, I still don't like ambient noise. The, the ambient noise, the work got me a noise canceling headset. Unfortunately, it's not noise canceling. At least it may be for other people that don't have a neurological d deficit where they're unable to filter out background noise. So it, it may actually work for other people. 
doesn't work for me. I, it, it's like I'm still wearing a standard headset, so I'm going to have to find a way to get either just learn to suck it up and deal or go get a doctor's note and get a like a like a noise type type of headset. What that'll look like, I don't know. Um, I get frustrated at work. I have to speak to the public. I'm, I'm a technical support agent. Um, I've noticed things that might not have had frustrated me um, before the stroke. Now I find a little bit more frustrating. Um, I'm not sure why. I'm not trying to take it out on the customers at all. Don't get, don't like, I just, I, I find it like just frustrating and, and I can't really explain how or why I, I just noticed there's a, there's a difference to the nature and the quality of certain interactions I have. I'm just like, Ugh, please no, let this end. So, and I was never really like that before. Um, you okay? Have you been drinking? Have you been having scotch? I thought we agreed. Again, we contracted. None of the drinky booze before the filmy booze. Okay. Do you have to turn on like another 90 day chip? You know, we've got a drawer full of those, right? Yeah, okay. So, I've noticed that I've got a lot of expectation on myself, right? Um, Oh, and if anyone needs a good esthetician for hair removal, he is available for rental, right? Because right now he's plucking the hairs off the side of my neck. So if you happen to have body hair um, in a G-rated portion of your anatomy and you need it removed, he's he's available for rent. Um, he's not licensed or insured in any way. Um, may or may not be carrying bird flu. Um, so, you know, at your own endeavors, at your own risks. Um so I've got a lot of frustration that I put on myself sometimes because I'm highly anxious about being able to perform at the same level. And I had to learn and, and it was difficult to learn. And the gentleman, and I, again, I don't mean to cast aspersions on what little character you may have. Um, the gentleman that helped me through the initial return to work process, I just had to remember him and I had a conversation that you know, you are going to get frustrated because things have changed. You haven't done this job in six months and you have the extra to add the benefit of having had a stroke. So I've learned a couple of valuable lessons. One, when I truly need help, I go get it. No, no, truly. When I need help, I, I go ask. Um, my manager, apparently he's done. Um, my manager has been brilliant. I can't say enough good things about her. Um, so I've also learned that there might be occasions where I might, might be a little bit extra anxious. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, I, I worked in the building I had my stroke in. I had my stroke at work. I'm still very anxious about that at times. Uh, it's very busy at work. And what I mean by that, there's a lot of peoples and it gets a little bit too people-y. So I'm a bit anxious at times there because I have to navigate around. Uh, two, or th sorry, three, I know there's times where I still don't move the same way through a room. Um, part of that goes back to the bit of anxiety because that's where I had my stroke, I guess. Um, part of it, maybe I'm just getting overwhelmed and that's the point where my brain is just not being a happy camper about it. So I occasionally have to remind myself to walk purposefully, right? Um, so that can be a thing at times. Now, the process hasn't been completely unrewarding, right? Because when I started logging in to the, the website we used to track your statistics, I'm looking at the website going, holy shit, I can still do my job. Like I was not expecting to be having reports done that I'm that effective. I, I honestly expected to come in and, and have some serious stumbling blocks. Uh, so it was, it was rewarding to have gotten some validation that I, I can still actually do my job. That, that's a good thing. <laughs> 
I still get very anxious about even going into the building. About a kilometer and a half, two kilometers out from work, I still get very anxious about just going into the building. And, and that, I'm going to assume, and I hate to assume, because I was always taught as soon as you start assuming, you stop thinking. Um, so I'm going to make the assumption, which I don't like to use that word, uh, that the anxiety from just being in the building over time will lessen, I'm hoping. Um, I'm hoping over time I can lose the sunglasses at work because this is what I look like at work indoors under fluorescent lights. Well, I didn't have to wear these before my stroke. So people now get to see me differently. People that don't know me or did know me before the stroke, like, why do you wear sunglasses? Lucky, no one's really asked that, that I can think of. By far and large, my coworkers have been supportive. There's been a couple awkward instances, but so be it. Now, let's get to this, the few difficulties I have left after the stroke. Uh, one, there's still a little bit of social isolation going on there. Don't know why. I, in some instances, I know it's me. Um, there is one specific individual at my work I don't trust at all. So I, I'm not seeking out any interaction with that individual. Um, I think some people are still afraid. They don't know what reaction I might get or they might be given or they're expecting or not expecting. So I'm, and then, then I know there's a whole bunch of people that are at work that I don't know at all because they're new hires. So I haven't, I've never met them. I don't know them, whatever. Um, I just want to be very very conscious about how capable I am about in what situations and I've noticed there are times where I get a bit extra stumbly okay? and then I've got a few really key people as a small cadre of, of people that check in on me constantly right so for those of you that have been given the little check-ins now and again just to make sure I'm doing well uh, that I'm handling my day in an effective fashion that everything's okay everything's good thank you Right? That hasn't been that hasn't gone unnoticed um, or unappreciated. Now, just a general caveat for those of you that have had a stroke that are right now either in the middle of your returning to work or beginning to think about return to work. Let's just talk about some realities. One, are you truly ready to go back? Right. Because at one point during this entire process, I'd thought about going back and I was like two months after my stroke. And had I done that, it would have been a mess. I was just a complete mess. So if you believe and know you are ready to go back, what's your doctor say? Does your doctor, be it your neurologist, your psychologist, speech and language path, physiotherapist, occupational therapist, does your clinical team have the ability, the need, the want, the desire to sign off on you going back to work, right? So if you're ready to go back to work and the experts say you're ready to go back to work, great. Now, before you, uh, one second, I'm just going to pause this while I go get the bird. Hi there, me again. Um, so I'm going to have to actually do an edited video. I think I sorted it out. So I've now quieted the bird. Um, yes, he talks. He was saying pretty bird. That was him in the background. So let's just continue on here. There's some realities you need to look at. Right? So we've determined you're ready to go back to work. Your clinical team's ready to go back to work. Your work is prepared and ready to receive you back to work. Um, and right now I'm working on a set of videos about returning to work, specifically and in generalities about just the process of returning back to work. So for you, the individual stroke assaulter that's coming back to work, you've got to be realistic with yourself. And, and I mean in many ways. One, this is going to be moments of terror, moments of anxiety, uh, because you have to go back to work and be productive. There's going to be expectations that you're productive. Um, you're going to be worried. Am I going to be allowed to keep my job, right? Um, depending where you live, that might be a real issue. Um, then you've got the other thing. Will the people that you work with be understanding about your situations? 
um, your circumstances, your limitations, your disabilities, your dysfunctions. Um, there's a lot of things going on there. The only advice I'm going to offer in this video, uh, so I don't completely run out of content for another video, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get scared. You're going to get terrified. You're going to get anxious. That's normal. It's completely, totally unadulterated normal. Right? You got to find the funny where you can, because there's going to be moments that are going to be a little bit funny, and it'll be a little bit funny because of your stroke. You're going to have to find the moments that are anxious, and you're going to have to deal with them. And sometimes that might mean you need to take a break. Sometimes that might need you need to find a person you trust and just get them to walk you through it to make sure you're not a complete nut bar. You know, there, it's going to be moments where you're a little bit terrified, a little bit frustrated. You don't remember things. You don't remember people's names. Don't internalize it. Right? And what I mean by that is don't take it in on a level where it's going to be disabling. Right? Another thing you're going to do to assist yourself with your return to work is go to counseling. Go. Um, I have a master's of social worker and she's also a registered psychotherapist. So my therapist is a has a master's in social work and is also a registered uh, psychotherapist and she is amazing you're gonna you're gonna need help piecing through that return to work piece and that's all I'm gonna say here is is you need that help right? and that is help that's gonna be beneficial both short term and long term because right? in the short term it's gonna help you get comfortable being back to work in the long term it's gonna help you be comfortable to stay at work because that's the ultimate goal, you staying at work. So the last five weeks, they've had their moments of dread, moments of terror, moments of fear. I've, I've cried at work and at home. I've been exhausted uh, at work and at home. I've napped, never at work, only at home. Last five weeks, they've been very rewarding, very challenging, very difficult, very delightful. You know, it, it's been a mixed bag of emotions. But ultimately, I believe with the partnership that I've, I have with my employer and the people around me that are supporting me, this is going to have some longevity. Next week, I move up to six hours a day. Uh, I do that for a week and then go to seven hours a day and do that for a week and then go to eight hours a day. And then at that point, I'm a full-time employee again and should continue on without restriction. And it's just looking for the next opportunity of advancement. So... For those of you that have been watching the channel, if you happen to know someone that's either going through their own journey post-stroke or they're supporting someone in their journey post-stroke, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to them. They may get some benefit out of it. Um, for those of you that are stumbling through the world of your stroke right now and there's a topic you want to see me cover or you want to have a conversation with me, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you happens to just suddenly have some symptoms that just don't look right, you know, and you think maybe they're having a neurological event, maybe that event could be a stroke, you're looking for things like they immediately appear, uh, appear befuddled or confused. They uh, happen to um, have vision problems. They can't see out of one eye. They, they can't move their eyes properly. They see in grayscale. They can't see in color. They only see a little tunnel of vision. They happen to have facial droop. They can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. They have... Um, slurred stuttering speech inappropriate word usage for situation or context they can't smile properly they can't um they can't stand unaided they have general body weakness or weakness on one side please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911 something so simple could save a life